Hi everyone, I'm John Kenneth Agbawa from Raffles Institution, and this is my final presentation for RoboCup Singapore Open 2021 under Co-Space Rescue U19. Prior to this competition, I participated in Virtual RoboCup Asia Pacific and RoboCup Singapore Open last year. I will be covering my main strategy and my learning experiences in this video. A challenge can basically be split into accomplishing three main objectives. The first is obstacle avoidance, which include avoiding running into traps, colliding with walls, and leaving the map, because all these would cause the robot to lose points and waste time. The second objective is object targeting, which is how the robot collects the randomly spawned colored objects as quickly as possible, as well as to complete certain combinations such as RRBBCC or RBC sets to generate super plus and super objects respectively. And the final objective is navigation to the deposit zones and super plus objects, which involves efficient pathfinding to a given coordinate on the map. I will now discuss the methods I use to accomplish each objective. To accomplish the objective of obstacle avoidance, I created an algorithm that only uses the robot's position sensors and compass to avoid traps, walls, and the edges of the map. Using OpenCV, thresholding can be applied to an image of the map, convert it into a bitmap, which can then be used to generate two-dimensional arrays, which simulate vectors that repel the robot away from danger. When the robot is traveling towards danger, the vectors corresponding to the robot's position in the array will reduce the speed of the robot and cause it to turn away from danger. This achieves reliable obstacle avoidance. However, as a backup, the robot still uses its ultrasonic sensors for proportional wall avoidance when it gets too close to a wall or is in a signal loss zone, and also uses its color sensors for trap avoidance when it detects the yellow warning. Next, to accomplish the objective of object targeting, the robot first needs to decide what colors it should target. Ideally, the robot should aim for RRBBCC sets as it generates a super plus object which is worth a lot of points. However, certain colors are more difficult to find and RRBBCC may no longer be a good strategy because the robot could spend the entire run trying to find the last color to complete the set. To tackle this problem, the target number of each color is modified based on the relative abundance of each color on the map. For example, if the robot only finds one black object in the first two minutes, it will switch its strategy to one RBC set and three red or cyan objects. And if no black objects are found within the next two minutes, it will switch its strategy to just collect red and cyan objects so that it will still score a decent amount of points. The map is split into zones in which a specific color of objects is spawned in, and the robot will target the corresponding zones with the most color it needs. For example, if it is looking for two cyan objects, it will target the zone which spawns cyan objects and once it is inside the zone, it will use random search, which maximizes the search area and increases the chances of object collection. Finally, to accomplish the objective of navigation to deposit zones and superplus objects, I created an algorithm which uses trigonometry to calculate the angle of the target coordinate from the robot's current position. It then calculates the angular error of the current compass reading from the target angle, and proportional steering is then used to turn the robot until it faces the target angle. Together with the obstacle avoidance algorithm mentioned earlier, the robot is able to move towards the target while avoiding traps, walls, and the edges of the map. Overall, these methods drastically improve the number of points the robot scored within the six minute time limit. Ultimately, the biggest variable that affects the robot's performance is the random spawns of the objects. Hence, it is crucial that the robot is able to adapt to the dynamic object generation and optimize its collection strategy in order to score as many points as possible. While preparing for this competition, I learned the importance of optimizing the way I write my code, especially when working on vector map generation, which involves many repeated calculations on a given set of pixels. A majority of the time was spent on trying different approaches to reduce the time it took to generate the maps and implementing it with the robot's movement. Dealing with new bugs and errors with a new simulator, such as different object height and floor physics, also taught me to adapt to such changes 
and find ways to modify my solution in order to accomplish the objectives. Thank you.